and assembling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, Herod inquired of them where Christ should be born. But they said to him, In Bethlehem, the land of Judah, for so it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come forth the captain that shall rule my people Israel. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel for the Feast of the Epiphany. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. One of the critical errors of our time is this. Modern man, when he thinks of God or acknowledges his existence at all or his coming among us, tries to make God think and act like fallen man. Modern man tries to make God like us. Modern man makes God a sort of chum, an equal or even less than equal. This is not new. The ancient Greeks and Romans had all these gods that were projections of fallen man. Seems these old, erroneous, idolatrous ideas are coming back to haunt us. Well, the fathers of the church have a different view, thank God. They teach us something different, namely that God became man so that man might become like God. Holy, good, truthful, pure, supernaturalized. God came to elevate us and lift us up out of our misery. But today, we make God become like us miserable men so that we can justify our miserableness and not have to take up that cross to become holy, pure, good, and truthful. So an example we can use today, someone in a position of authority recently preached these words describing how our Lord's staying behind in the temple for three days apart from his parents how he behaved. Quote, For this little escapade, Jesus probably had to ask forgiveness of his parents. End quote. So, this person calls our Lord's staying in the temple an escapade and says that he would have had asked forgiveness for his behavior. This is a prime example of how modern man tries to make God share in our fallen nature. So there's an inversion going on. No surprise. Now this is one of the reasons God gives us mystics. These saintly souls have responded to God's kiss. They were drawn up into the mystical heights of holiness and godliness, such that they were shown many wonderful things about how God thinks and acts. Thus, they understand the ordering of charity in God and in his works. They do not try to make God like us, but rather labor to show man what God came to make us like. All their writings are to show us how God thinks, how God acts, and how God wants us to be. Among these was the 17th century Venerable Mother Mary of Agreda, who saw many things about the mystery of the finding of Jesus in the temple and why God acted the way he did. And we'll get to the epiphany in a moment, but let's start here because we want to counteract that false statement that was made. So among the things that she lists, and we can maybe add a few as we go along, are these. Christ did this for many reasons. Here's one. Increase the merit and devotion in Blessed Mary and St. Joseph. He wanted to increase their merit. Number two, to make them a type, a prefigurement of future findings of Jesus in the temple. If you want to find Jesus, where do you find him? In the temple. Third, that they would fulfill scriptures. Among other passages, there are those found in the Canticle of Canticles of the soul seeking its beloved. Number four, to put their virtues of fortitude and patience on display. Number five, to show how we must do penance to find God and to be made more like God. Ah, 
That touches on the reason why man wants to make God like us. We don't want to do that penance. We don't like that cross. Mary and Joseph had to do penance to find Jesus that day. They had to search. Number six, how we should grieve at the loss of God is on display in our Blessed Mother and St. Joseph. And finally, number seven, to show how in God's plan, sorrow is followed by joy for those who cooperate with God. No escapades here. And no, God does not ask forgiveness from anyone for drawing them to himself in whatever manner he sees fit. To think and speak otherwise is an effort of fallen man to make God like us. Now, turning our attention to the feast today of the Epiphany, we can see the three kings provide yet another example of this. According to our mystic, Mother Mary of Agrida, these three kings were, so to speak, kissed by an angel on Christmas morning, kissed by an angel sent from the cave of Bethlehem by his majesty. They were summoned to the crib through a dream on Christmas morning. The kings responded immediately and set out to arrive 12 days later. The same angel sent from the cave in Bethlehem then formed the star that guided them. The star was miraculous, being made from the air below the atmosphere where it remained. It remained in our atmosphere. This agrees with St. Thomas and most, if not all, of the fathers, doctors, and mystics. It was a truly miraculous star that shone both day and night to guide these holy kings and in the end come to rest on the divine infant himself. For modern man, however, this is too much. We must make God think like us. Thus, science is consulted. High power computer programs are written to prove that it was really just a confluence of a few planets. That was the miracle. Besides, the kings were just astrologers and would have taken months, even years, to figure out what to do and where to go and what it all meant. No, the mystics show us how God thinks and acts. The kings were kissed. They were kissed and they were drawn. Angels were involved. But in order to be shown their Lord and King, in order to be made more like God, the kings had to consult authority and tradition. Thus, the star purposely led them to Jerusalem where they had to meet with Herod and consult with the priests to find where the Savior was born. In other words, God made them look back at what he had said and done in order to go forward. They looked back with the help of authority and found the writings of the prophets. Thus enlightened, they could move on. Modern man is not moving on because he refuses to look back at what God has said and done to see what he is really like and what he really wants. The modern scientific explanation has to overturn all tradition, meaning all the fathers, the doctors, and the mystics were wrong. It was really just a couple of planets, and we have to reinterpret all the scriptures and do violence to them to make this work. That's modern man. This is making God think like us. Do not give way to these fabrications, to these efforts. Rather, let us be like those kings. They had to choose like angels choose in order to see the king of kings. In other words, they had to respond to the kiss of God's grace without being wishy-washy, willing it all the way to the end, come what may. In choosing to act like angels, they were drawn on a most difficult journey. They were drawn on short notice. Through hostile Jerusalem, they had to pass. Where there was no faith, but only craftiness, violence, and manipulation. 
So too, in our times, we are, as it were, in Jerusalem. This is where we are. Where the star is not shining. Where there's doubt, craftiness, and violence, and manipulation. No matter, we have the light of faith. And we have to keep to our choice, to our faith, like angels. Willing it all the way to the end. Despite the doubters and naysayers of this time. For it was the king's angel-like choosing to respond to God that kept them on the track. Such that they were in the end shown the divine infant and his most holy mother. But again, to arrive safely, they had to look back to go forward. They had to look back to go forward. Let us do the same, always taking into account what our holy Catholic faith has always taught us. Especially as seen in our holy fathers, doctors, and saints and mystics. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.